What's up, guys? Uh, Terry, just a few things to note before this podcast starts. Uh, so unfortunately, it is a bit laggy this week due to the fact that I was on shitty Wi-Fi uh, at a cottage. Uh, we basically rented it, like my family and I, and it was kind of like a little family vacation. Uh, we recorded it. Everything seemed fine. And then kind of after that, I went back, I reviewed it, and it definitely does lag in some pop spots. Uh, we decided to post it anyway because like, we thought the info was really good. Um, you're going to definitely learn a lot about the economy, inflation. We talk about partying in Miami, uh, a bunch of stuff like that, like how that type of vibe has changed. Um, and just a, a bunch of stuff like that, how things have changed from COVID till now. Uh, so it's definitely a good one. Um, just mind the leg, please. We'll make sure that it does not happen again. But uh, we just are going to post this anyway because we feel that the information is is super, super good. So apologies from us. Uh, I'm sorry about the lag, and I hope you enjoy this, uh, and thanks a lot. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours podcast. Uh, today, we got Alex, who has been, a, up, a few, yeah, he's been on a few times. Um, so lately, we've kind of taken the podcast in a different direction. You know, we've talked a lot about, like, the <laughs> overall market and just trying to touch on all different subjects as far as trading and stocks and all that goes. So we wanted to bring Alex on and kind of get his insight and everything. So yeah, man, thank you for coming on. Yeah, man. So I want to try to come on more often too. I hope to come on at least once a month because I think this new direction of the podcast is going to be good because a lot of people want to hear about the overall markets. They want to hear about maybe alternative ways to invest money and what you could do. And, you know, on future episodes, I'll explain like what I do with my excess cash and, you know, how I try to grow my money because um, there's no linear path to do it. It's just based on, you know, your personality, what you want to do, how risky you want to get, whatever. So I think first it's August 5th, 2022, and we should talk about what's been going on in the market. So we're technically in a bear market and, what that means is stocks just keep going down and down and down and down yeah. and, down, and then down and down and down and down and down and then go figure they fucking keep going lower. So we're in a market now where it's a bear market. And the reason why we're in a bear market is because the Federal Reserve hiked up interest rates to try to fight inflation. So inflation was caused by the 80% of US dollars in existence being created in the last two years, right? It's being caused by supply, supply chain issues because of the Russia-Ukraine war, by China partnering up with Russia, not giving us materials, whatever it is. So that's number one. Now, number two is with this elevated inflation, there's not much demand anymore because people don't have money. People don't have money because all they spent all their money on stimulus checks. Whatever money they had, they already bought a Tesla. They already bought a Peloton. They already bought whatever the hell they were going to buy. So now... The dollar is worth less. You has dollars anyway, and there's no demand to fucking buy anything. So that's what's causing all these crazy things. So the market now, as of today, has started to rebound a little bit. Um, it's probably rebounded because people think that peak inflation is over. And yeah. the way that you could judge how inflation is over is the three, well, the main things are energy prices, commodity prices, and housing prices. Hmm. So these are the top three things that, you know, judge um, the inflation. So energy went sky high because the Russia-Ukraine war is starting to yeah. come down. Commodities went sky high because the war in China started to come back down. And now with hiked up interest rates, real estate is the next thing to come down. So the market is starting to rebound in anticipation of us hitting peak inflation. Now, the thing to note is the market is what you do in the stock market is you pay today's value for future earnings or future, whatever, future, whatever. Yeah. So even if inflation peaks in six months, the market is already pricing that in right now. So although we might have another month or two of inflation that's lagging, the market is telling us now based on commodity prices, based on energy prices, based on housing prices, that inflation has peaked and you know that's kind of where we're at right now who knows what's going to happen yeah a lot of people are saying that there's going to be a recession but i mean what do you guys see on your end in terms of all this stuff i think 
I think the scary thing to me is like what you said, like the market's kind of telling us the future direction of where we're headed. But outside of the market, I'm seeing more of like recession activity, meaning like my friends have no money to spend yeah. when it comes to like buying a house. People have no money anymore. They just to afford an average mortgage. They can't because do what it. What happened is with this before you with the let's say you're making X amount of money, you're able to buy a one million dollar house. Now with the interest rates going up, you're able to buy a five hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah. All of a sudden, your buying power got cut yep. in half. And 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 I'm noticing what people are doing again. So my my parents they uh, they build homes, kitchens, baths, and people are coming to them with a shit ton of money, two hundred grand. Let's redo the house. But they don't have the cash. They're just taking out what the value of the house was right yeah. now. And it's the same thing as 2008. Next thing you know, if the market crashes, if demand goes down, those people are going to be shit out of luck if they go to sell their house. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. I think for me, like just being in Canada, like you get to see like a bit of a different perspective because it's not necessarily the same as the States. So like I find here, like people like don't think a recession is coming uh or that we're even in one you know but i mean to me like i i just always like believe this and like maybe that's because i'm like a long trader but like i believe that when everyone sees it coming it the effects are usually kind of like lessened like when everyone everyone's like preparing for like this big storm that's fucking coming this big fucking blizzard and then we end up getting like 10 centimeters you know i don't think it'll be as bad as people are like predicting uh i think it's just going to be like kind of like a little like maybe like mini recession as you call it you know you have the white house changing the fucking definition now you have all this shit going on um i think it's going to be like a, a a mini recession i don't think it's going to be like as big as like 2008 um yeah. i i just think like the fed's going to do what the fed's going to do they're going to cut people's fucking buying power things are going to what's going to happen bro is this the thing is like i think we're already in a recession right now yeah we've been in one and it might be that, you know, people yelling recession, recession, recession. It might be that inadvertently, yeah, the fear of a recession, right? The fear of a recession yeah. is enough to panic people enough to say, all right, recession's coming, recession's here. Everyone's selling, everyone's worried, everyone's whatever. Yeah. And we almost by causing a mild recession, like you're saying, yeah, it, it fixes it as if people are expecting a large one does that make sense it's like yeah it's that's how like, i feel too My, yeah it's, it's a little bit weird bro and to be honest i'm going to tell you from like a product perspective so i know people that move products whether it be like vacuums uh speakers um anything any type of product a microphone whatever a type of product so what ended up happening is there was so much demand built up so much demand built up because so people so many people have so much money now, what ended up happening is because of the supply chain issues, I don't know if you guys know, but China was not letting you ship containers and the prices of containers quadrupled. So you were not able to get your products from China. Okay, you're not able to get your products from China. So you have all this demand. You have all these products fucking waiting. And what ended up happening is now that supply chains are starting to ease up again, you're getting in the products, but that demand is gone. Yeah. Now that that demand is gone, you no longer want to buy the products from the manufacturer. So now the manufacturer is stuck with so much inventory that they can't move because there's no demand. Yeah. People don't want it anymore. People have no money anymore. And now they're stuck with the bag of all bags of inventory that they can't move. And that's why you see companies like Walmart. That's why you see companies like Target saying, yo, we're overstocked right now and we got to sell this shit at a loss. Right? Yeah. So that's what's been happening, guys. And that's, that's just, that's literally just in like the product industry. So there's so much fucking supply. Yeah. There's not enough fucking demand, yeah. which causes prices to go down, which causes inflation to go down. So it's yeah. almost yeah. like a self-fulfilling prophecy that is happening yeah. here, man. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I still think the scary thing is though, we, even though we see it coming and I agree, maybe it's going to be much more mild than everybody anticipates, but it doesn't change the fact that People just don't have money. There's a lot of people that are just the wealth gap is getting bigger and bigger. And unfortunately, it's also we're also stupidity, bro. It's also stupidity. Yeah. I mean, like, look, yep. bro, like, don't get me yep. wrong. Like, 
Like, bro, I got I got a good amount of money. I like to go buy stuff, a stupid shit. Okay, no problem. I buy I bought a samurai sword. I didn't need to buy a fucking samurai sword. Okay, sure. <laughs> Aside from that, bro, when you go to the Gucci store, when you go to the Louis store, when you go to the Prada store, bro, it's like everyone's fucking balling out. No, and the yeah, reason exactly. why everyone's balling out, bro, is because they don't have money. They're putting it on their goddamn credit card. Yeah. yeah. It's an illusion, it's man. It's an illusion. So all right. these people that are already broke are trying to flex that they're fucking balling. Meanwhile, they're in fucking credit card debt, bro. <laughs> it's and that's terrible. not going to change. That's the worst. And it get worse. Because again, the less pe- money that pe- people are making, the more they're going to revert their credit card. As the interest rates, the more APR they're broke. you owe your credit card. Yeah, dude, how many Teslas do you see driving bro, around? Do you know how many they're people I know went and fucking Tesla? They're everywhere. Everywhere, bro. Yeah. Because everyone took their stimulus. Like, oh, I have a shit ton of money now. Went and leased a Tesla. You make 50 grand a year, but you're, you're driving a Tesla. And here's a problem, bro. The only way, right? So let's let's think about this macro. The only way to... So there's two issues that the Federal Reserve has right now, right? Number one is inflation. Number one is recession. Okay. Yeah. Recession is fixed by improving spending, by improving demand. People buy. When people buy shit, recession is fixed. Inflation. Inflation is caused by the print supply chain issues, whatever. So they got to pick which problem to solve. How do you fix each problem? Okay. Number one, you want to fix the inflation problem. <clears throat> what you got to do is you got to create a recession. You want to fix the recession problem. The way to yeah. fix it is to print money, give people stimulus, and cause more inflation. So these, the Fed is stuck in the middle. Yeah. They're stuck directly in the middle. What do I do? Do I fix a recession or do I fix inflation? Yeah. And I think they're going to try to a little bit fix both. They're not going to be able to fix one. They're not going to be able to fix the other. They're going to go right through the goddamn middle, right? Yeah. Because what's going to exactly. end up happening is this. One year, one year, inflation is going to be fixed. It's going to be gone. It's going to be back to normal. Okay, sure. So inflation issue is going to be fixed. There's still a recession spending issue in all of history. In all of history, the way to fix the recession is to print, have money. Right? We printed it. Vietnam War, we did not have money. We printed it. 2008 housing, we did not have money. We printed it. We didn't have money. We printed it. So the only way to fix the fucking economy is to print money. If you print money, you call it inflation, okay? So that's the problem here is if we don't print money, if, if we don't print money, it's a depression because there's no money left. Yeah. You got to give these people money. The problem is when you give them money, it causes more inflation. So the whole system is, is fucked but up. We're the, we're only money is not real. To do it because it's we're the reserve currency. It. The way, dude, the way that money is created is the Federal Reserve clicks the button, beep, trillion dollars up here. And what they do is they buy corporate bonds to put that money into the market. They're buying corporate bonds of Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and it's shooting all these fucking things up, bro. So the whole system is rigged, to be honest. The whole system is rigged. Money is fake. The stock market is rigged. The Federal Reserve is fucking rich forever. If the Federal Reserve really wanted, there's in the basket, it's like housing is considered one, no eggs, milk, whatever. If the Federal Reserve really wanted the weight of inflation, for example, if milk was 10% of the weight and milk was the highest inflation, they would say, you know what? Let's bring milk from 10% of the weight to 2%. Let's raise the weight of eggs from 2% to 10%. All of a sudden, the inflation number changes, bro. Yeah. And they could do that shit. So the whole system is fake. The whole system is rigged. The whole system is broken. The question is, how do you fucking make money on the broken system? Is you got to follow big money. So if big money is saying, all right, interest rates are up. It's, it's real estate is going to crash. Fuck, bro, if real estate's going to crash in two, three months because of high interest rates, that's what I want to buy, right? Yeah. When the stock market was crashing 35%, when Apple went from 180 to 130, when Tesla went from 1200 to 600, 
I'm not selling. I'm buying, bro. Yeah, I'm buying. Exactly. I'm I'm clicking the fucking buy button because you always want to do what the opposite of the people are telling you. You always want to buy when the market is red. You always yeah. want to sell when the market is green. So yeah. everyone right now is saying, oh my God, real estate is next. Real estate is next. Real estate is next. Yes, real estate is next. But you better be fucking ready to buy. Yeah, especially because in what's cash happen too. Is, like, unless you unless you are want a fucking high interest rate, you better be willing to buy. Or what you could do is this, Harry. What you could do is you could buy the house. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say a million dollar house. Okay. Million dollar house in two months is eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. Let's say the interest rate is five percent. I'm going to buy that house at eight hundred thousand. Next year, when the Federal Reserve starts dropping interest rates to stimulate the economy, I'm going to go and refinance that house at two and a half percent. Okay. Okay. That right. actually works. Yeah. It's true. Of course yeah, it no. works. Bro. That's the system. Yeah. The system is rigged, well, bro. The rich people always rigged. stay on top because what they have the money to do it when houses come down. It doesn't even have to be rich people. Bro, but it just has people to be people are still that are financially can... literate. Yeah. Smart, yeah let's yeah. say, for example, bro, even, even having a hundred grand in the bank is you rich. Know? It may not be a million. My but a hundred grand, you could fucking put a down payment on a four hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah. And bro, if you buy that four hundred thousand dollar house, maybe in two three years, it's gonna be worth six hundred. You know. Yeah. So there's plenty of opportunities to make money, but you just gotta be able to have cash sitting, waiting to yeah. be able to deploy. And bro, I deployed a shitload of cash in this market crash into you know Tesla, Apple, Amazon, every, as much as I could, bro. And now my averages are fucking stupid, dude. It's stupid how. I'm already, a lot of people are down on the year, bro, on their large cap investments, their retirement, whatever yeah. you want to call it. And I'm pretty sure, bro, let me, if I double check, based on, I'm just talking about like large cap stocks, like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, whatever the fuck it is. Just this year, bro, I'm up 3%. It's not a lot of money, but the NASDAQ is down 33%. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's the same. I was the same way. I, I was very lucky, I'll call it. And I... I, we talked about in the last episode, I woke up one morning and I saw these prices of like Apple, Amazon, like you're saying, and I felt like a moron not buying. Okay. I'm thinking these companies are great. They're going to last forever. And that's, I was the same thing. I said, this is it. So it's, I don't know. I want to think everything is bottomed and I personally do. And I think from here, we're just going to continue to rally. And I don't know what 2023 is going to bring, but for now, I think, I think we're going to keep pushing. Here's the thing, bro. There's only been so many times in the stock market history where shit has been down 30%. Uh, 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 Facebook meta is down 50%, bro. 50%. Yeah. This shit not anywhere, bro. I'm walking all around. People, bitches are still using Instagram, bro. They <laughs> sure they, they might have a bad year. They might have a bad year, but like, bro, they're back. Shit like fucking Apple, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon might be overstocked, but it's goddamn Amazon, bro. They're cloud business is going to be worth a trillion dollars in 10 years like these are good companies like goddamn zoom yeah. you're not going to buy a goddamn AMC. roku you're not yeah. going to buy a goddamn Elton stock yeah. but you're going to buy google god bro how, you got to buy a company you know we'll talk about this on a different podcast about how to determine which companies to buy and shit but like bro there's so much there's so much opportunity out there if you just have some fucking cash sitting there you know yeah 100 percent. and uh i just wanted to mention that uh um fuck <laughs> what the fuck was i gonna say i just completely Jeez, hairy brain farts <laughs> oh, oh my god <laughs> someone clip that <laughs> yeah well, i'll clip that um but yeah that's kind of that's kind of where we're at right now in the overall market guys Man. the overall market is starting to slowly rebound um you gotta remember that we've been in a downward cycle for eight months so even if we go up for one month, it doesn't really mean anything. It just depends. At the same thing as support. If the stocks hold support, they're going to go higher. Yeah. If the stocks don't hold support, they're going to go lower. So it depends. Every single dip, probably market's going to crash today. Go figure because we're talking about it. <laughs> but every single dip has been holding and you got to account for that. And if I remember correctly, I remember seeing a statistic out there that there is the most <laughs> amount of people shorting the market in history in these last six months. Yeah. I, I, what do you guys think about uh, if we kind of bounce from here and we go to like 420, uh, like 430, and then what do you guys think about like uh, we fade until kind of the winter and then we like uh, 
we like you know set a good bottom in like october november kind of december and then we rally you know, the thing is bro for stocks to go higher they need to go down and digest for yeah. stocks to go higher they need to go down and trap shorts yeah. so in a perfect world we go down to fucking 400 yeah we trap a new round of shorts and then we slowly start to staircase up because the exactly. market long term is designed to go up bro it's designed to go up yeah. sure there's going to be bear markets there's going to be recessions there's going to be crashes yeah but in between you know if you invest during the recessions, the crashes, those are the best opportunities to make money because those are at the cheapest fucking prices. Yeah, We're going to yeah. come back in this podcast a year later, bro. What we should do is mark a calendar, Harry, a year later, August 5th. Let's come back. Yeah. Let's do the same goddamn podcast. And yeah, let's compare prices. Yep, 100%. And I also think that like, the thing is, is that I feel like a lot of people who are like before, like we had a lot of people who were bearish and everyone was saying, this shit's going to zero, this shit's going to zero, this shit's going to zero, which is fine, it's okay, it's like, it's not, but like, it's okay, we can pretend, and then, so now we're starting to rally, and all the bulls are like, see, I told you, I told you, I told you, you know, this is going to rally, this is going to rally, this is going to rally, so it's, I feel like we're like, like, longs are just like, kind of getting trapped into this kind of situation, and then we go another round lower, shorts are like, see, like, you know, like, also, something to pay attention to, bro, is margin. So so yeah. I think the statistic is 70% of traders or investors use margin. I think, I think that's the number. Don't quote me. Go look it up on fucking Wikipedia or whatever the fuck you guys use. So uh, 70%, whatever, people use margin. So, for example, let's say you have 100 grand. You're able to invest with 400 grand. Yeah. Okay. I got 100 grand. I'm going to make it easy. I got 100 grand in Facebook. Meta. I got 100 grand. Leverage it up to 400 grand. Yeah. Okay. If Facebook goes down 25%, 400 grand, 25%, you get liquidated. Gone. A lot of these stocks, dude, are down 50%. So even if you're using two to one leverage, yeah. two to one, liquidated. So I think what ended up happening, bro, is a lot of traders, a lot of investors, they got liquidated. No more market participants for you, bro. So what's going to end up happening is a lot of these sellers, bro, I think have already been liquidated Mm. and there's not much people that are holding the bag because they've already been fucking liquidated at the lows. Tesla hit like 620, bro. You better believe Tesla longs were margined out. You better believe it, bro. You better believe it. They got all liquidated at 600, 700. Now we're at 900. And yeah, it same thing like with coin, too. Coin. Oh, coin, absolutely. And Kathy Wood or whatever. Like, she yeah. sold at 60, now it's back at 100. Yeah, bro. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the type of market we're in, guys. I mean, look, I think if the market is going down based on interest rates and inflation, I think inflation peaked because of oil, commodity, and housing prices going down. And I think that um, over the next year, the Federal Reserve is going to lower interest rates and if they got some fucking goddamn balls, they're going to print some money again and start the cycle all over again. They're going to, That's I think so. The same cycle has been happening, bro. In 2008, when they printed money, it took us 10 years to run out of it. This time, it only took us fucking one and a half years. It's fucked up. <laughs> that is fucked. But I mean, we were mailing money to people's front door. I mean, it multiple times <laughs> over and over and over. It, the United it, States, bro, is the world's fucking bodyguard bodyguard yeah. but the united states their number one export is fucking weapons bro they love war the united states loves war because the united states makes a shitload of money selling guns and missiles and fucking airplanes and everything bro yeah why do you think we have a fucking multi-trillion dollar military budget because we got the biggest goddamn army no one could fuck with us but instead we send all of our fucking um weapons to third world countries you guys go to war we're here to save you we're here to help you here take these guns Take these weapons because think about it. United States doesn't fucking export shit except weapons. Yeah. Weapons, bro. Yeah. We love terrorism. (laughs) We love war. We love the cartel. (laughs) Yeah. It's a really fucked up world, man. And I'm glad that we're talking about this stuff on the podcast. Probably our YouTube channel is going to get deleted. But point is, guys, (laughs) this is the real shit that's happening, right? This is the real shit. Don't listen to the White House. They're all a bunch of fucking politicians. Don't listen to the fucking Federal Reserve. They're all fucking lying to you. What you have to see is real world examples of what is happening. I don't know anyone that wants to be a trader anymore. 
I don't know anyone that has money anymore. I don't know anyone that's fucking Harry. You got a great topic about the Miami club scene. So you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just heard that the vibe changed a little bit. So, I mean, if you want to kind of talk about that and yeah, so I have, uh, my brother lives in Miami and he likes to go out and drink and party and whatever. And like, I don't really do that stuff, but like when I'm there, I like to go have fun, whatever. So I would say when the GME AMC era and crypto era was happening, bro, every club impossible to get into. If you're a guy, if you are a guy and you have money and you get into the club, Bro, these guys are bringing Dom P champagne. They're bringing fucking like uh, 1942. They're bringing all these crazy bottles. And what's changed is there's no more Dom P champagne showers. <laughs> They're all just bringing out Grey Goose. Don't get me wrong. Grey Goose is fucking amazing. But mm. the price of Grey Goose is 1000 compared to Dom P, which is 10000 You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. the club scene has changed in the fact that these guys are not balling out anymore, bro. They're still None. showing up. They're still hanging out, but they're not balling, dude. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's they're so not funny. bringing out the fucking uh, champagne or anything. You no more hear. champagne, bro. No more champagne. No <laughs> more. No more Ethereum Max. No more fucking AMC to the moon. You know. Yeah. What did you do? You guys were out and you fucking had a sign that was like GME short or something like that. All I, in short I, GME. Dude, I was I was fucked up that night. That was hilarious. All, all in short AMC and GME. Yeah, yeah. And that, that was. was I think that was the first red day that happened. <laughs> and bro, no, it literally, bro i'm not i'm not joking dude when that sign came up the dj was like yo am they, they did the like, amc i went to the bathroom the bathroom attendant was like yo what should i do with amc the bottle grows amc AMC, bro like at that point every single motherfucker owned the amc stock bro it was yep. crazy yeah no my girlfriend's sister bought a couple shares too bro my They're boy dan great. he's like a doctor and his like Superior doctor put seven hundred thousand dollars worth of money into AMC. Jesus, seven hundred thousand. I don't know where it's at now. Yeah, fucking good. <laughs> Holy shit! Hey, well, I mean, that's like crypto. These are rich people, bro. These are rich people. Yeah, it's crypto, dude. Do you know how many people I know took out like refinanced their house? They took out money, invested all of it in Bitcoin at like sixty k. How yeah. are they doing? <laughs> you paid really good. Yeah, you know? that's, that's that's what's been happening, bro. That's what's been happening. So, like, this is the world we're living in right now. The world we're living in is kind of messed up right now because there's a war going on. There's inflation going on. You know, purchasing power is down. And, you know, it's going to take time to fix, bro. It's going to take time to fix the way that you could see. And you can see, bro, these companies are laying off people. The reason why these companies are all laying off people is because they know that demand is not what it used to be. Yeah. And instead of fucking higher demand coming in to save price, save costs, they're just laying off the fat. I'm sure yeah. a lot of these companies had a lot of workers that were getting paid to do nothing. Yeah. So it's smart. Layoffs are smart. It's just not good. It's smart for the business. It's not good for the average person, bro. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, America is just like a stock, like kind of like what you're saying. We have to come back down, digest everything that we've done, so we can keep going forward and keep Correct. moving up. And that's what we're Correct. doing. It's going to take time. Hiring. Nope. It'll take, take a lot time. of time. But we'll but I, think, I think, you know, what's going to happen, bro, is the world is resilient. And if there's anything I've learned from the world, bro, it's that history always repeats itself. Um, so just like what happened in 2008 with housing is happening right now in the car market that you guys talked about. Just like everyone fucking lost their ass in 2008 and thought there's no way the world is going to be fixed, you know, preceded a 12 year bull run. And right now when the entire world is collapsing, when it looks the darkest, just like they said in Batman, the night is darkest just before the dawn. So I love it. That's and, you could tell, <laughs> and you could tell from the corporate earnings, bro, like, but one last thing is the corporate earnings, dude. They've been fucking crushing, dude. Amazon, Apple, Google, the biggest fucking market leaders are making a shitload of money. A shitload. So their earnings have not really been affected too much. So as long as they keep making money, bro, recession, depression, fucking giraffe market, bear market, it don't matter, dude. Yeah. It don't matter. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was solid. <laughs> Alex, you kind of killed it on the end there. That was good. <laughs> so what else, bro? Let's talk about other stuff. How's trading been? Uh, it's been really good for me, to be honest. Like, I mean, a lot of people have been like kind of, I know it hasn't been great for like a lot of other people, but like the last like three weeks have been super solid for me. Yeah. 
Um, j- just because the thing is, is that my process is a little bit different. So like, like it's like the inverse of Alex where like, uh, we always have one like hot stock to focus on that I can like either scalp around or just like do something like that. Whereas like, I feel like a lot of people like it's easy to get squeezed in this market. I feel like, and then like, by the time you get blown out, like a lot of people don't want to like short the backsides or like they're already squeezed out or like whatever. And they just don't want to come. What Harry does is very smart. So like, how do I, how do I explain it without getting too much waste? What Harry does is like, we short at resistance. So we wait for a stock that's already broken to bounce and short at resistance. What Harry does is he waits for it to go to support and he's just like, all right, I'm going to buy it at support. Worst case scenario, it's already at the lows. I'll lose 10 cents. Yeah. Best case scenario, it's going to ramp up, bro. So like, yeah. don't get me wrong. It's fucking brilliant. It's very simple, but like people just don't do it, dude. No, it's, it's like, I find like for me, like, uh, for example, like yesterday, what was it? NVIV or something like yeah. that. That like, was fucking nuts. Hot chick had already <laughs> fucking tanked. Uh, money was slowing into NVIV. Took some 840, sold into fucking 12. And yeah. it was that was like a five-minute trade. Or even if you look at any of these stocks, where like I'm, I have NERV on my thing right now. It's down from 460 to 380. Yeah. I'm sure if it goes down to 380, Harry's going to buy it. It's going to fucking bounce to 420, 450. That's where I'm going to short it. That's where he's going to sell it. And yeah. boom, Harry just fucking made money. And worst case scenario, he's going to lose 10 cents. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. Because I'm like, Harry's- oh, yeah, I stopped out here. Like yesterday, I tried one on NNBC. And, uh, you know, I should have sold it into fucking, uh, uh, what what was it? Like 370, 470, something like that. Probably should have sold VWAP. But I was like, oh, maybe we can get to like four bucks. Yeah. I ended up tanking. Stopped out for like, I think like, 10 cents and uh i just kept moving on nviv popped up saw that the money was going in there and that i was wrong and uh took some of that sold and uh, then i just fucking basically enjoyed my day but like yeah like i mean for me it's just like where's the money going where's the money fucking flowing and uh it's if if you're like if you're short a stock and it gets targeted as a short like as a money flow potential the real key is just stopping out of that. I feel like yeah. in this market, because we a lot of people so get stubborn. A lot of people get stubborn and like their stock, it's like their stock, it's like targeted for whatever reason. And then they're like, oh, but it can't, but it can't, but it can't. And then they get blown out. Dude, Alex, I, I remember we got on the phone like three or four years ago. We talked about this. If you're short and a stock instantly becomes the hot chick and all the money flows there, it is perfectly fine just to get the fuck out. And yeah. get flat because you're gonna be able to get an entry at a better price, dude. Yeah, but people add, 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 add. but yeah. a lot of long traders, I want them to focus on what Harry does because what he does is not only keeps his losses small, he's the least greedy long trader I ever met. He sells where he needs to sell, he sells at resistance. That's it's, it. It's very low risk, bro. It's low risk. So, like, yeah, bro, Harry, I'm sure you got a fucking bajillion videos on this stuff, but like. Just basically, if you have any questions, hit up Harry. But like, basically, if a stock is on the lows, chances are it's going to go lower. Okay. But it has a higher probability of bouncing. It's the same thing with the stock. The higher it is, the more probability it has of kind of coming back down. You know? Exactly. Especially in the fucking small caps too. Because everyone wants that one that goes from like 2 to 10 or 2 to 20 or 2 to 30 or whatever. But like, if you're just consistently selling, like, Okay, I'm going to target, like, if we're super under VWAP, I'm going to target, you know, like, maybe a little bit over VWAP for a fucking sell. Or if we're opening around VWAP, okay, maybe I look at at fucking, like, highs for a sell or, like, some whole number or something like that. Like, it's just, like, like, for me on a given day, I just need to make sure that I don't, like, pick any stock, if that makes any sense. Like, I just have to really be in tune with what's going on and really see, like, SOPA, I didn't get to trade yesterday because, like, I woke up. And it was already up at like 360, 370. So by the time we get to three bucks, it's like, it's not really like a good risk reward opportunity for me. So I'll just leave that alone. And then I was like, okay, well, I'll just get the next one, you know? And it may wait. Like, what did you wait? Like 30 minutes yesterday to take a trade, Alex? One or like hour you waited and a while? Half, one and a half hours. Yeah. Like you waited a while. You just have to wait until this one dies off. And sometimes for me, it doesn't. Like, I'm like, okay, no trades. Cause like we had, uh, 
like when Siga was running and those other socks were running, they would just run right out of the gate. You know, they would just fucking start going out of the gate and they would not stop. So like for me, it's like all the money's there. There's not a good risk reward opportunity. So I'll just come back tomorrow. And then yesterday was like my process to a T where it was like, okay, SOPA had tanked. Money was going into another one. It was a great situation to fucking, you know, just take some. And uh, we ended up just, it was like two halts or something like that. Two halt ups. I was like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. It, stocks are running right now. Jeez. Yeah. Maybe we should cut this. All right, guys. I think that's probably yeah. going to be it. Yeah. yeah right. We're recording well, this at like 8 a.m. So it's been like 8.30 right now. So. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, guys, what you should do is leave a comment in the video and let us know what you guys want us to talk about on next week's uh, – or not next week, next next podcast. Yeah. Uh, so that we have a list of topics and we can just kind of keep going through stuff that you guys want to hear. And if you thought that, you know, this conversation was helpful and you want to hear more about this stuff, just let us know and we'll kind of yeah. turn the podcast into whatever you guys want to see. So good stuff, guys. For sure. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone.